10 years, a decade of time. It's a milestone in the importance and of significant moments in our lives. I thought about titling this A Decade of Enough is Enough to walk through what the Inaspa's campaign against violence in the first 10 years. But after the shootings in Parkland, Florida, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, and then the even more recent shootings at Central Michigan University, I thought the title should not be A Decade of Enough is Enough. It should be A Decade is Enough is Enough. A decade of feeling frustrated, angry, disgusted that we have not done more to address this societal violence that's taking place in our schools and on our campuses and in our communities. I worked at Northern Illinois University at the time the shootings took place 10 years ago. And I had the fortune to be asked to help those that were directly impacted. To my staff and I to walk along the journey of those as they tried to overcome grief, to deal with loss, to overcome fear, the student survivors. Every mass shooting that has taken place since 2008 has caused an immense emotional toil I can't describe, let alone one that takes place at the same exact day in the almost the exact same time 10 years later. It hits you in the gut. For most of us, it was the shootings at Virginia Tech that opened our eyes to the level of inhumanity that could come into our halls and into our campuses. We desperately tried to learn lessons from Virginia Tech and what they experienced. 11 months after their shooting, one month after the shooting at Northern Illinois University, Dr., the late Dr. Zenobia Lawrence Hikes gave the closing address at the 2008 conference, NASPA conference in Boston. She proclaimed that the attacks, these societal attacks, were not just attacks at those campuses, but yet attacks on the very ideals of education, the peaceful exchange of free learning. And she called on student affairs practitioners to heed this warning and to act with a fierce urgency to stem this tide of societal violence. Her enough is enough talk resonated with all of us in the profession. It was a catalyst for us to come together and stand in unity and take action. Within the next year, 15 different national associations came together and under NASPA's leadership created the Enough is Enough campaign against gun violence. It had three purposes. One, to provide resources to campuses to educate and raise awareness, to help campuses build coalitions with K through 12 and local police so we could address this violence on a local level, and then to conduct research to hopefully help influence legislation. We have some great resources on the Enough is Enough website, a NASPIS page, sample initiatives that you can use. We have two really strong publications that give a student affairs perspective of how to prepare and how to respond to situations and incidents of gun violence. But when I reflect over the last 10 years, we have not done enough. When I think of the last 10 years, I'm sick and I'm sad that we have been continually hit with this barrage of mass shootings in our society. We have not been able to stem the tide. We've been knocked off our feet. This is a list of 40 or so mass shootings that have taken place in churches, in restaurants, in schools, in a movie theater, in our campuses. I feel like we're becoming desensitized to the national media that says the worst and deadliest attack we've seen since Virginia Tech. Before Virginia Tech, it happened in, two, in 1991, 16 years earlier. However, since Virginia Tech, we've seen the deadliest shooting take place three times. We've seen it switch from Virginia Tech to the Orlando Pulse nightclub shootings in 2016 to yet again the 2017 shootings in Las Vegas. When will enough be enough? When will we take action? After the Las Vegas shootings, there was one line in the State of the Union address. It was describing and reflecting on what we've experienced as a country when the President said, we watch strangers shield strangers from a hail of gunfire on the Las Vegas Strip. We didn't hear shootings like this or the one that happened in Sutherland, Texas are unacceptable and we need to put resources behind to make this stop. Because 
We heard that rhetoric five years earlier when a gunman went into a school and shot children and inno took innocent lives at Sandy Hook Elementary. We thought then that America would wake up and we would address this societal problem of gun violence. But since then, all we've done is count the incidents of gun violence. We've just seen them increase in our schools and on our campuses. Public health researchers are looking at this from a lens and saying, if we look at the timing of mass shootings, it's mirroring, in some ways, that of contagious disease outbreaks. 20 to 30 percent of mass shootings seem to be inspired by a mass shooting that happened previously. We need to look at these mass shootings. If we look at the 10 deadliest shootings, six of them use similar weapons. The AR-15, it was invented in 1958 to be used in Vietnam for the purpose of mass killing. Now, while banning a specific gun and type of gun might not take care of all mass shootings, I do think that limiting access to weapons that were specifically designed for mass killing does merit some consideration. But it's not just shootings of mass violence. It's, just, it's all the types of shootings and gun violence we have, suicides, the criminal acts that we have. If you go to gunviolencearchive.org, it tracks this since 2013, all of the gun violence that's in the media. You know, there was a, an unintentional shooting just earlier this year. A mom was changing her one-year-old uh, when her three-year-old pulled out a semi-automatic handgun from underneath their couch and fatally shot her in the head. We need to look at gun violence because there's too much access to guns. If you look at the K through 12 shootings, about half of them, they're accessing these guns from their homes, from their relatives. In 2015 and 2016, there were 269 incidences when guns were confiscated on those campuses. There's only, most states, 180 days in the school year. It's quite clear that we have too large of access to these weapons. And is there any surprise why? We have 5% of the world population and we have over 41% of the civilized, civilian firearms in the world. If you take the next 20 countries and add them together, it adds up and equals to what we own in the United States. We have the right to bear arms and we certainly do. And it's, we have looser gun laws and it's not because of our First Amendment right. Make, don't be fooled by that. It's because guns are it's big business. It's a billion dollar industry. There are more gun sellers than coffee shops, than McDonald's, and I'm not loving it. So what can we do? Well, the first thing is become informed, and there are a number of different agencies that are providing information. Follow some of these. Every Town for Gun Safety, the Trace.org, Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence. The National Compassion Fund was started by victims of mass shootings because they wanted to make sure the dollars that were raised were actually getting to the family members or the students who were impacted by the shooting. So connect with some of these. And for you, NASPA, you can follow the Enough is Enough on Facebook or our webpage. The other thing that we need to do, all of us, and you can do this even right now while you're in this room, is contact your legislators. Reach out, let your mayors, let your governors, let people know this is not okay. You're not okay with the status quo. Call your elected officials. I sat down with a, a state senator and he said, you know how many times in a month I hear from my constituents on the issues of gun violence? Zero. He said on lobby days occasionally I'll get a parent who's lost a child or a grandparent who's lost a grandchild to come in. But they're not hearing from us daily, weekly. They're not seeing this as an issue. They're not reading your Facebook posts. We need to make sure that we're getting that information to them. Demand action. The youth and our survivors in Parkland, they're not letting this shooting go away quietly, and we need to support them in this. We need to stand with them. We need to support their March for Our Lives, the National School Walkout. We need to help stand with them because we don't want this to become our identity. I have three young children. It pains me to think about telling them why they have to have violent intruder drills and prepare for when a bad man might come into their school to shoot. We have an option to try to really prevent gun violence, or we can react to it. We can try to arm teachers, or we can try to teach people how to prepare when this happens. We need to look at this and say, we have a responsibility. 
I believe every generation has to tackle the issues of the day. That it's an obligation of us to leave the world a better place for the next generation. I'd like to, at this time, as I get ready to close, ask if anybody in this audience has known somebody or has been impacted themselves by gun violence, whether it's been an impersonal, or there's been an active shooting situation. If you've been impacted by gun violence or you know someone who's been impacted by gun violence, could you please stand up if you're able to? Wow. If you are attending an institution or you work at an institution or you went to a high school that has had a frequent under church that has had gun violence, an act of gun violence, could you also please join them and stand up? And if you're not okay with the status quo, and if you want to see some things change with gun violence, would you please join and stand? Ten years ago, Dr. Zenobia Lawrence Heights got us on our feet, called us to action. I've done my part in ASPO. Once again, we need to take action. So I'm asking you not just to say enough is enough, but let's make this enough is enough. Never again. Thank you. Good night.